G'day folks, Ziggy D here. Let's chat fixing Arch Nemesis. Now, I harbor no illusions that GGG is gonna watch this video and then go make a bunch of changes, but I do enjoy chatting about game design and maybe some dev does get an idea that helps them somewhere down the line. You never know. Anyway, since its implementations, Arch Nemesis has undergone a bunch of patches and there have been some solid improvements made such as reductions in the number of rares encountered at once and the recent defensive stacking nerfs. But I'm sure that many of you, like myself, feel that mostly it's just gotten less egregious. I'm sure it's even started getting to the point where some of you actually don't mind Arch Nemesis, which is fine, totally. Most days someone comes into my stream and says they actually like it now. However, most of the time when I actually dig a little deeper into that thought, the reason why they like Arch Nemesis is that it makes the rare monsters more interesting, challenging, and rewarding. And this is a goal that I personally agree with. But here's the thing. While Arch Nemesis might well be achieving those aims, I do think there are better ways to actually do so. I wonder how much better the game would feel if Arch Nemesis managed to make rares more interesting, challenging, and rewarding without spamming us with on death effects, slows, ground effects, and so on. If its mechanics were better communicated and understood by the players. If gameplay was more clear overall, and if rather than being annoying hard, it was fun hard. Because I think that's what it actually comes down to. There are two major kind of difficulty in games. Abrasive difficulty, the kind that makes things harder in ways that annoy and frustrate. And the other kind is joyful difficulty, the kind that drives you to improve your gameplay or character, the kind that leaves you feeling super satisfied when you take down a tough boss. And when done well, this kind of difficulty even makes failing entertaining. A lot of Arch Nemesis's difficulty, unfortunately, is that abrasive, frustrating kind. It's not that rares are challenging, it's the way in which they are. So let's talk about three different routes to improving Arch Nemesis. The first route is the route that I suspect GGG is currently taking. Keep Arch Nemesis mostly as it is currently designed, and keep rounding off the rough edges, polish and slowly pick away at the worst modifiers and the things that players complain about the most, until people eventually stop complaining. Now this route may well eventually achieve the desired goals of making rare monsters more interesting and challenging, and eventually do so in a way that doesn't cause too many problems. Obviously I'm not really a big fan of this route, and that's for a few different reasons. First, complaints will get fewer and fewer over time, both because things are getting better, but also because the people with the most feedback might simply have stopped playing. Secondly, the end result is likely just a very diluted version of a poor system. One that's mild enough to not offend, but also one that's not really enhancing the game as much as it could have been if it had begun from a better starting point. And so the second route is to recycle Arch Nemesis with a different implementation. Let's go through a couple different steps here. Step 1. Start by powering down the list of Arch Nemesis modifiers massively. There are around 70 Arch Nemesis modifiers. Look at this list. It just goes on and on. Also, look at how many things each modifier actually does. It's just so much. One of the original concepts of Arch Nemesis was that players would know what a rare monster does, that is, clear communication of gameplay. That was clearly lost somewhere along the way. I mean, it's easy to see how that happens, you just keep adding cool ideas until you end up with a massive list like this. A lot of these modifiers overlap anyway. There are seven different modifiers that deal lightning damage in some way, for example. Also, I'm sure that many of you agree that there are some mods that are just a bit cruddy or that you don't really even know what they do or why they're there. So, I'm suggesting, step one, cut this list down, remove some of the weaker designs, duplications and so on, until you've gone from around 70 mods to at least half that, if not lower. And this change goes hand in hand with step two. One of the reasons why so many mods are actually needed is that they stack up to four on a monster. But I would propose that this is actually a bad design choice. Having three or four modifiers on a rare monster also makes it hard or impossible at times for the player to actually identify them and understand what they're going to be facing. It's only really possible to spot one or two visual effects on a monster when you're actually playing, and that's not even talking about when you're fighting a legion which can have like ten or more rare monsters at the same time, that each have three or four different arch nemesis modifiers. So, step two is limit rare monsters to one or two modifiers max. Have a limit of one throughout leveling campaign, and then in endgame, have rare monsters have a mixture of one or two Arch Nemesis modifiers. 
Make them a bit tankier if necessary to compensate, but each rare only has one or two of only the better mods from the heavily cut down list from step one. Quality over quantity. Step three then is to make each modifier have a greater impact on the rewards, requiring less lottery number combinations of modifiers to get decent rewards. This would serve to smooth out the current issue with spikiness of rewards, where average rewards are heavily skewed by certain rare combinations in collaboration with stacking quantity and rarity bonuses. This is where you see people dropping stacks of 10 divines and exalts. Hopefully smooth that down to having a reasonably rewarding arch nemesis monster every map instead of every 10 or 100 maps. Finally, if all this works well, you could consider then adding a pair of passives to the atlas tree. One of them would allow you to raise the Arch Nemesis modifier cap to 3 to occasionally get super spicy rares with more rewards. And another keystone that instead lowers the cap to 1 at endgame. This would be for players that simply don't enjoy the system that much, or who need the game a bit easier for their build and don't mind trading off some reward potential to get it that way, or even just for people who want to stack challenge and rewards elsewhere in the game, not on every rare monster. All of this combined is kind of my dream implementation of the current Arch Nemesis concept. Fewer modifiers, a list of mods cut down to the better ones on the list, more consistent rewards, and greater control over the gameplay impact the system has through the Atlas passive tree. That said, what about that third route? This would be if Arch Nemesis was scrapped as a concept entirely, because maybe it's not the best way of achieving the goal of challenging, well-communicated, and rewarding rare monsters. Maybe Arch Nemesis makes the game too much about Arch Nemesis modifiers, and not about the monsters themselves. My final route suggestion then is the highest effort, admittedly, but maybe highest reward long term. Make the monsters themselves strong, interesting, and challenging. Harken back to yesteryear, where we were afraid of the monsters, specifically the Devourer, the Drop Bear, the Tentacle Miscreation, and so on. There's a bunch of ways that this could be done, but my idea is that occasionally you would run into a pack of monsters being led by an alpha, and that alpha is the rare monster, and that rare monster is tougher and more dangerous and more mechanically interesting than the normal monsters around it. Right now, rare monsters can be everything. Shitty little crabs, generic bandits, a plain old skeleton, and so on. It's actually really hard for these monsters to ever matter, because they simply don't do anything. So, it's easy to see why GGG would make a system like Arch Nemesis, because it's a modular way to make sure that every rare monster, even shitty little crabs, can do some mechanics at you. But, it'd be so much cooler if rares were only the more interesting monsters in the game. Instead of a rare skeleton, the rare monster of the skeleton pack is the Necromancer. And the Necromancer is bigger and badder than before, and even has a few new abilities. Maybe some different summons, and even an offensive spell. What about a pack of crabs then? A giant alpha crab that spits water and slams down giant claws to sunder the earth is the rare of the pack. Maybe it's got little holes on its shell, and other little crabs come out of it. What about bandits? Instead of a generic bandit, rare, in amongst all of the other generic bandits that just walk up and swing their swords, you instead get a bandit leader with a bunch of skills akin to a tough and powerful rogue exile. The minor zone bosses in the campaign are actually kind of like this idea. Imagine if rare monsters were closer to them or closer to rogue exiles in design. I'm certainly not suggesting that maps should be filled with bosses, don't get that idea, but certainly the most interesting and scarier monster bases with a few improved and new ones thrown in would make better rare monsters than generic crabs with a bunch of disconnected Arch Nemesis modifiers. We'd actually once again then be fighting the monsters themselves, rather than those disconnected Arch Nemesis modifiers, where half the time we don't actually even pay attention to what the monster itself is. The communication of gameplay would be a lot better too. It's much easier to learn and understand what the giant crab or the big necromancer does than trying to identify which of the slot machine of Arch Nemesis modifiers each random rare rolled. Well, those are some of my ideas. They probably have some glaring issues and may well be a bit unrealistic at times. After all, I'm just developing from my comfy armchair here without actually having to execute what I suggest. But nonetheless, maybe you found them interesting. Maybe you want to share some of your ideas in the comments below as well. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.